I'm hoping for no more BS MLB. No more knuckleballers. No more bunting assassins. No more bullshit MLB. Let's just play the game the way it's supposed to be played. After those back-to-back -back losses, I was panicking. I did not want the squad to go on a losing streak. It has been a while since the squad has lost three games in a row. So I did not want that to happen. And some people may be like, what in the blue hell is this guy doing starting James Shields? This is actually the flashback James Shields, the 90 overall. And I picked this guy up a little bit ago. Actually, it's just been forever since I've been able to take him to the mound. Jose Fernandez and the steroid junkie have been hogging up the hill the past couple of games. And Fernandez has not been doing a good job. Either as the steroid junkie either. So maybe an underrated source can get the job done with that James Shields. I like the knuckle curve on that guy. I remember when I first started playing Diamond Dynasty in MLB 16. I had just the, the I think he was a silver at the time. Just the live series James Shields and the knuckle curve was disgusting. So I wanted to pick up this James Shields because he wasn't going for that much. Only around 6,000, 5,000 stubs. And, or 5,000 stubs. I didn't mean, yeah. What, I don't know what I'm talking about. If I can speak correctly, I picked up James Shields. He was only going for around 5,000. And it was a good pickup because I don't want to spend a mammoth amount of stubs on, pitcher, on pitching. Because that is a waste if you ask me. I spent about 60k on Jose Fernandez and that is the highest I will ever spend on a pitcher because the longest time he wasn't able to take the mound and lately he's just been taking the mound every two seconds it seems like and finally it's paying off those 60,000 stubs and I don't know at first or not at first just not even that long ago I was saying I didn't really want to spend around I didn't really want to buy those guys who were only going for around 20,000 30,000 because I thought that would be not a waste but I just would rather get somebody who was around a 96 or 97 overall and everybody who's going for around that price is only around a 94 like Chris Sale and Bumgarner and Strasburg Strasburg's actually going for cheaper than 20k at the moment but I had him and I didn't really like what he was bringing to the table so I'm going to probably start picking up some underrated guys who can possibly fill the void. Like, you guys have seen, I've pitched with Aaron Sanchez, who MLB has just been out here disrespecting. Since he's only an 85 overall, the guy should be at least a 90, but that is just me. And yeah, James Shields was just picked up. Maybe some more 90, 91, 92 overall guys will be picked up, see what they can do on the squad. Because, yeah, I've been struggling with Jose Fernandez and Jesus. You want to talk about a buzzkill? Try spending a... Just try spending... I don't know what the hell that guy was doing right there. But try spending 60,000, 70,000 stubs. Barely even be able to take them to the mound. And then when you do, struggle with them. What a waste of stubs. So you might as well just spend 10,000 max on a pitcher. And then see what they can do. So that's what I'm probably going to do from now on. Just pick up some underrated guys and stuff like that. Because it seems like everybody who is playing this game has around the same guys anyway. The high overall guys, the pitching and stuff like that. And I have no chance in hell I'm spending that many stubs on pitching. So maybe, maybe in the near future I'm going to pick up some more guys. What is wrong with this game and Pujols? What is even going on at least once a game? Pujols makes amazing contact and doesn't get a hit. I mean, that may, I don't know, that might have been a hit if there wasn't a shift. I think he had the outfield in a shift as well. So I don't know what the hell is going Yeah, the outfield obviously wasn't a shift, but man, I don't know what is going on with Pujols and the game just not rewarding him. When he makes good contact, it is just insane. Now it is getting a little bit. It has been ridiculous. I don't know what I'm saying. It's getting. It is. It has been a bit ridiculous. The way that Pools is not getting rewarded for making those good contact swings right there. So after this guy sent one deep with Bautista, we now got a 3-1 game going on, and hopefully this was going to be another close one because it is just. It just seems like the last couple games I've played, they have been. Thrillers, they have been close games, pretty much down to the wire. 
And after that last game, I had a bad taste in my mouth, man. That was just awful. It was just disgusting what happened in that last game. It was actually kind of funny. But I just wanted to come back and do something. Donaldson, he wasn't in the lineup the last game, I don't think. Or was it the last game? I don't know. I don't think he was in the lineup the last game. But I put him back in if he wasn't. And Eddie Matthews, dude, I don't know. He may have to be inserted in at third base some games because he has just been out of control. A man possessed at the plate he has been since he has been coming in pinch hitting. And just even the, fir the first at-bat he had starting the game. Yeah, yeah, last game I played, I get the dude when all the bullshit happened. Eddie Matthews played in the very first at-bat he sent one deep. So he's making statements. Very big statements. Donaldson, I might just platoon those guys even though I was facing a righty this game. I had Donaldson in. I may just platoon those guys from now on. Put, you know, Donaldson in against lefties because Donaldson actually does crush lefties. Like, destroys lefties. And Eddie Matthews destroys righties. I'm pitch hitting Andre Dawson. And talk about a guy who has just been coming in and performing. Hit high and deep out to left. Jackson going back on it. Gone! That was some must-needed insurance. We needed that. Andre Dawson comes up with a huge clutch home run to left field. I think I said it was I think I said it was 3-1 earlier, but it was 2-1. And now it is 4-1 after that dinger from Dawson. And then the rest of this inning, I'm not getting anything going. Pujols again just grounds out, so he is getting angry. Pujols understands the game doesn't want, doesn't like him. They don't like Pujols, man. I'm starting to think that the game is just, you know what the game was doing? San Diego Studios came out and said, you know what, let's let these bastards purchase fucking Pujols, waste their 5,500 tickets on Pujols, and then when they pick him up, we're not even going to let him get a hit. Because that's what it seems like they're doing. Every single time Pools comes to the plate, pretty much he's making good contact and the game is not rewarding him. I know there's a shift on Pools, a nasty shift, but that isn't the case. He's always hitting these line drive, these line drives right at outfielders and stuff and just can't, just, yeah, line drives right at infielders and outfielders and everything. It is just a little bit crazy what's going on with Pools. Josh Hamilton has been going off since he has been on the team too. So, I think he's hitting around 330 since he has been on the team. Donaldson shutting my ass up, getting a base hit against a righty right there. Should have moved Hamilton up to third 100% right there. That was He was late throwing the ball, and he actually missed his cutoff, man, I'm pretty sure. Gary Carter has been struggling, to say the least, lately. I may put... I, I don't know. I may put Yogi back in at some point. Who knows? But Gary Carter got off to such a good start. I have a feeling he's just going to break out of it very, very soon. He's only hitting around like, I think he's only getting, damn it, I don't even know. He's probably only hitting around a buck. Uh, one, he's probably only hitting around 100 since, since uh, I don't know, a couple games ago at least. But I'm putting Billy Carter in because this guy had a fair amount of lefties, I'm pretty sure, at the, at the plate. And Ichiro, you need to, I don't know, you need to do something against because he has just been killing, everybody has been killing me with Ichiro. Finally, the game is giving me some luck. They knew. They knew what happened in the last game. I'm making some bad contact there with Crawford. I'm getting a base hit. And then Altuve is ripping one down the third baseline. So Crawford is scoring. And Altuve is going to make it easily into third base right there. So now we get a man in scoring position for Pujols. And like I said, he is angry. He is 0 for 3. That only means one thing, that he is due. He's been kept quiet out of the number 3 hole. Hitless in his three at bats so far. Now a swing by Pujols, and this ball is hit high and deep, and you can forget about it. Way out of here. King Albert gets on the board in a huge way, blowing this game out of the water, if that even makes sense. The squad is now up 7-2, to two, so this one is pretty much in the bag. We are up 7-2, to two, like I said, in the seventh inning. So there's only one thing could only happen now. That this guy is going to come back in this game. I have a I struggle with holding leads. If nobody has noticed, I always blow leads. I am the king of blowing leads. I may not blow leads for the most part, but I may go up like 5 nothing in a game. And I'll always let them back. Not obviously intentionally or anything, but I'll always let them back in the game. Like, they'll come back and make it 5-4, make it interesting all the way into the ninth inning. 
and it is just it is hilarious now so that is what I didn't want to happen in this game so I put in Jabba Chamberlain to try and shut the door with two down in the eighth inning I'm getting him swinging he had two guys on so that could have been deadly but I'm getting out of this inning he's hitting Jimmy Rollins almost swinging right there and didn't really make much noise in this inning I had two guys on for Altuve with two down he is just flying out to right field so we're going into the ninth doesn't even matter everybody knows man it, it doesn't even matter what kind of lead you got going into the ninth inning because it is always going to be interesting getting the first guy swinging and I'm getting the second out of this inning on the ground out to Altuve right there so the squad is gonna bounce back in a big way we're getting a big win off those two losses the squad bounces back in a big way an entertaining game all in all, so if we have to choose one who stood out among all others, why not go with this man right here? He's our top player of the game. Yeah, he came through with a couple of hits, but more importantly, that big home run, which really led his guys to this victory.